and some Pecorino Romano cheese, which is a sheep's milk cheese. Parmesan is a cow's milk. I don't want to do that. I'm going to add some stock to the rice pilaf. And some stock to this one, and I'll help you give them a stir. And then we can put these both in the oven, or we can cook them right on the stovetop. So I'm going to just let oh, them cook really? right on the stovetop. Just make things a little easier. What I want to do is I want to get this nice and moist with um, stock, and we're using uh, chicken stock sometimes around Thanksgiving. I'll buy up some turkey pieces and do some turkey stock ahead of time so everything is turkey. These dishes I like to make again after Thanksgiving because I always have a ton of turkey stock afterwards. Right. <laughs> after that uh, turkey comes out, we do nothing but uh, eat a small amount of it because there's so much other food that we make. A little bit more here. I'm going to kick your heat up here to bring that to a simmer. Okay. want this to be nice and moist, not swimming though. Mm -hmm. And then we're just going to let it come. Actually, this one I might just throw in the oven, give us a little bit more room because we have two other dishes mm -hmm. to make yet. I think two. I lose track all the time. <laughs> it's, it's crazy here. But you know what? We film live to tape, as I was telling you earlier. So no matter what happens, we keep going. It happens. It is what it is. It is what it is. You know what? Because that's what happens in our own kitchen. Exactly. It is what it is. The doorbell rings. The kids are yelling. Dog is barking. It's always something. Okay, so now this is nice and moist. Nana's stuffing is unbelievable. Nana's stuffing is just loaded with cheese. And it's got some bread in it and golden raisins. Mm. You want this? Yeah, I'll take that and be another one. I've got my trusty towel here. Right in. I'm going to switch off actually. This guy on the top. Nana stuffing right in here. Actually, not Nana stuffing. That one's for you. Okay, put a lid on yours. Mm -hmm. give, me, give me a little bit more stock. And I'm going to get you cooking another one. Okay, I'm going to lower that heat down a tiny bit. We're going to start off here. We're going to make a cranberry sauce. Mm, right. We've got cranberries. We've got some, you can either use a dessert wine or a white Zinfandel. I'm going to use a little bit of triple sec. Oh, that sounds good. I don't want to put too much in there. We don't want it to explode. And we're going to put some crystallized ginger. Mm. This one actually has some jalapeno pepper. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. It's a little bit spicy, but you know what? You can control that as much or as little as you like. Crystallized ginger, always be careful cutting it because it is a little bit tough to get through. So you don't want to slip off and make this cranberry sauce redder than it should be. Definitely don't want to cut your fingers doing any of this, but this will all soften up and add just a wonderful, wonderful flavor. I think this might need a little lower temperature. Okay. Yeah, when we see those wisps of steam, yeah. that's what it's telling us. Perfect. Okay. Now we've got our crystallized ginger. We are going to put the zest of an orange. Now zest is just scrapings from the outside can be used in desserts and salads, all kinds of wonderful dishes. So we zest this orange, only a little bit of the outside. We just want to take the very outside, that's where all the natural essential oils reside, so that's where you're going to get flavor. Mm -hmm. If you go down too deep to where that white pith is, it gets bitter, right? gets bitter mm -hmm. and really doesn't add anything to the dish at all. Okay, that's our zest. And then on top of everything else, we're going to mm -hmm. squeeze the juice of that orange in. Throw that away, rinse my hands, kick that heat up a little bit, and let that come to a simmer. Now I'm going to put a rubber glove on. 
because I'm going to work with a jalapeno pepper. Okay. And when you cut jalapeno peppers, or any kind of hot peppers, the oils that are inside just soak into your fingers. And forget about touching a sensitive area like your eyes or your lips or your ears. God forbid you, you don't do anything and don't wash your hands. <laughs> those oils soak in and your fingers will be on fire. Really? Oh, the only way to combat that is to soak them in milk. And we've had it happen here. A little bit of sugar in this. Now that's coming to a simmer. I'm going to cut our jalapeno and I'm just going to take the bottom half of this. So I cut it and I'm breaking it off. You can see all mm -hmm. the seeds in there. We don't want the seeds. I cut it here and just cut that seed pocket right out, scraping them. Always watch when you're cutting, scraping with hot peppers. They tend to spray a little bit. You would want to get that in your eyes. But now I have these two nice little pieces. Cut them up into fine little strips. Then I'll chop them up and we'll add that in. Another way to do this is to cut the jalapeno pepper in half, clean the seeds out, leave it whole, you know, the whole half, and put the whole thing in. Fish it out later. Oh, really? Oh, okay. This way you're not, um, you can keep tasting it and when you reach Control. the desired level yeah. of heat mm -hmm. that you like, you can pull that piece out and it stops it. Chop here, and we are good. Okay, stir that in, get rid of this garbage, and of course get rid of this glove. Now I'm safe. I'm going to flip my board right over because I don't have time to clean it, and just let that one um, sit for a minute and see how it's going. Check our rice oh, here. Oh, I'm done. That. Yep, I'm going to put a tiny bit more stock in this. I'm actually going to add a pinch of water. And that's the beauty of this. We can keep checking it and as it needs a little bit more hydration, if it looks like it's soaking up fast, beautiful. different uh, types of rice will yield different um, requirements for how much liquid you need. Mm -hmm. Mix so go up. over those ingredients again. The mirepoix of the onion, the celery, the carrot. Right. Then we had our pistachios. We put our rice. Okay. We put our stock. Wonderful. Okay. Just let that boil away. And now we have one more that's really simple. This one I like because you really don't have to do much at all. Um, it involves an orange, which we're going to cut this orange up into some pieces. So this is a no-cook cranberry sauce recipe. All goes into the food processor. Right. I believe this is actually on the bag of cranberries oh, really? uh, for certain brands. Our fresh cranberries and our sugar. sugar. But I am smelling something in that oven, so let me get over here and take a look. It might be time to check our stuffing in our little Cornish hen. Oh, we got a little bit of smoke going. I just want to take a look at this. I think that's about done. I'm going to move this guy down. Look, he's getting nice and brown on us. I think what I can do is take a look and see. Whenever I leave a pan like this out of the oven, I put this Good on. Idea. Because anybody touches that, they're stuck. Right. They're not going to get their hand off. Now, if that were a turkey, you would have put foil on it? I would have put beginning. foil because it's got to cook a little bit slow. Mm -hmm. But you see how I'm turning it over? Right. I like to constantly flip because that breast will dry right. out. Right. 